I've been on the search for an eastern screech owl for a while now. Sometimes when I'm out birding, I'll put my lens up on a tree and scan the nooks and cavities with the hopes that I'll find one nestled in. I haven't seen one yet, but I keep trying. They're not the easiest bird to find. Their camouflage is absolutely brilliant, allowing them to hide in plain sight. Their feathers look like tree bark, and sometimes when they perch in a cavity entrance, their feathers will overlap with the tree as if becoming an extension of the bark. Their ear tufts, which aren't ears at all but just tufts of feathers, further help to break up the outline of their face. They have bright yellow eyes, but in the daytime, you might only see thin, squinty slits. There are two different colors of eastern screech owl, the gray morph and the red morph. Only about one third of them are red, and most of those are found in the southeastern United States. Their diet is quite varied. It ranges from songbirds, mice, squirrels, and rabbits, to earthworms, tadpoles, frogs, crayfish, and lizards. They'll even take the occasional bat. Pretty much anything that can be swallowed is on the menu. They hunt mostly at dawn and dusk and are active at night. They sit and wait and then swoop down from their perch to catch prey. You might have heard that many owls have asymmetrical ears, which allows them to pinpoint the precise location of prey. But with this owl, that isn't the case. I found a few studies that show that eastern screech owls have symmetrical ears, not asymmetrical. Furthermore, the facial disc on owls functions as a parabolic dish that enhances incoming sound and directs it to their ears located at the perimeter. Screech owls have a small facial disc relative to the size of their eyes. It's fascinating to consider this ratio when you look at any owl, actually. Take a look at these pictures of the great gray owl, long-eared owl, barn owl, and northern sawwet owl. They all have a large and well-defined facial disc in relatively smaller eyes. Then compare the eye to facial disc ratio to that of the screech owl there is a noticeable difference. When scientists put a screech owl in total darkness with prey, it was unable to locate it. They duplicated the same experiment with the northern sawwet owl, and it was able to find the prey each time. These findings suggest that while screech owl hearing plays an important role, they rely more on their vision to locate prey. And even just a little bit of light will suffice, Hence, they're hunting in low-light conditions instead of at night. If you can't find an eastern screech owl during the day, try listening for them. They make a variety of vocalizations. While they do have a screech call that they make when defending their nest or young, it's not likely to be the one you'll hear. Most often, they make a high-pitched, horse-like whinny, which is used to defend territory. And they also make a tremolo, which is used for communication between a pair or with family members. They also make soft hoots, bill clacks, and barks as well. One of the things that surprises me about these owls is their small size. They are about the same height as an American robin though their proportions are certainly very different. They have a stocky body and a big head, and it appears that they have no neck. This picture certainly gives a size reference, as the owl is small enough to perch on the handler's thumb. Their ear tufts help distinguish them from similarly sized owls in their range, such as the northern sawwet owl. There are two other types of screech owl in North America, the western screech owl and the whiskered screech owl. Eastern and western screech owls are very similar looking, but their ranges have little to no overlap as the Rocky Mountains divide the two areas. They have distinctly different calls, and also their bill color is different. Easterns have a grayish olive bill with a lighter tip, and westerns have a darker gray or black bill and also have a lighter tip. 
Whiskered screech owls have rounder heads and shorter ear tufts and are found in a small area in southeastern Arizona and New Mexico and further south into Mexico and Central America. The scientific name of the eastern screech owl used to be Otis osseo. Now, the long-eared owl has the same name, but in reverse, osseo otis. In 2004, the American Ornithologist Union renamed the screech owl as Megascops osseo, but you can still find it referred to by its old name on the internet. The long-eared owl's name remains the same. Have you been so lucky as to see or hear this magnificent owl in your area? Or perhaps one of the other two screech owls? If so, feel free to share your experience down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.